So Jim, go ahead. Jim, go ahead. All right. Um, I just want to make sure I'm going to do this well with um, sharing my screen. Perfect. And let me know if you can't see it. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. There's not, I'm assuming you're telling, you're not saying anything so that you cannot see no. my screen. Not yet. All right. Well, let's try this. All right, so we're, oh, here we are. I'm sorry, they just, they literally just turned on my mic, my, my internet, not even two seconds ago. Okay. But here we go. Let me know if you can or cannot see this, Barbara. Sure can. That's awesome. We just, uh, it's good, we just see your slides to the left, which you can uh, remove. And yeah, then... I'm gonna get that bigger so we have a little bit more. Yeah. Let me know if we're good. There we're good. Go ahead. Excellent. Okay. Get myself off video. Thanks everybody for being so patient. We really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you very much, everybody. I do apologize. Um, all right. So we'll go through this as quickly as possible. My name is Jim Whittington. I'm with Lifeway Mobility. Uh, we have been a, an accessibility provider for whew, 1990. Uh, 1991. Uh, we, if you've been in the accessibility world, have done some research. We used to be called Extended Home Living Services. Uh, about two years ago, we became a national company. We're now Lifeway Mobility. Same people, same products. Um, just trying to help folks with disabilities uh, remain independent or age in place, which of course has become a huge uh, part of the of the world right now. Since we're expecting in by 2030. Uh, we're going to probably have about 28, they're predicting 28 to 30% of our population is going to be over 65. So just when our seniors thought we were alone, we're not, <laughs> we're going to be the dominant, we're going to be the dominant population pretty soon. Uh, so with that, anybody wants to stop and ask a question during this, please feel free. This is so informal. You may have questions about something that is specific to you, which we can answer. Um, and I'll stop the video and we'll go from there. As a, a company, one of the, the places that we um, do most of our business or most of our work is right there where you see that. Outside stairs, inside stairs, which tend to be the biggest problem uh, with most people uh, and their homes. Um, we're, not many of us get to have ranch homes. Um, and if, if we do, there are still stairs that go to the basement and um, washing facilities and fuses and what have you. Um, the bathroom is another place uh, of challenge for most of us. Uh, most bathrooms are made five by eight, which is nowhere near big enough for a person in a wheelchair, um, let alone somebody who walks in with a walker or a rollator and has to do a turn. Uh, most tubs, uh, tend to be too high for some folks to get their feet over. So a lot of obstacles and we try to help people uh, get through those. I'm just gonna go through this uh, really fast uh, because this is something that is more part of my uh, presentation with seniors, but I will bet that probably most of us, including myself, fall under this uh, category of fall risk assessment. This is something that most hospitals will um, incorporate the minute somebody gets admitted to a hospital, they have these 10 questions. And of course, if we're saying yes to four of these, uh, we're considered a fall risk. Um, uh, so I myself, I know uh, multiple medications, um, issues with uh, mobility, especially if you've had recent surgery, um, cognition issues. Uh, a lot of us, as we tend to uh, get over 65, um, sometimes uh, experience what's called sundowners, where we have a little bit more confusion as the day goes on. Um, not unusual. Uh, you don't even have to have, a, you know, dementia or Alzheimer's for some of us to just kind of forget. Common cause, non-fatal trauma-related hospital admissions. Well, we're here, so falls in the home. 
uh, one in three seniors fall each year, which is a staggering statistic, um, and falls account for 25% of all hospital admissions. So if anybody on this Zoom has fallen, you're not alone. Um, and whether it is because your knees gave out, your ankle or hip gave out, it could be something in your home. Dangerous part, the most dangerous area in the home, the bathroom. Uh, a few reasons why, we'll get into it a little bit later, but needless to say, a lot of emergency room um, admissions because of people falling in, in the bathroom, either while they're bathing or while they're in the shower. Um, reasons why, we all know bathroom floors tend to be slippery. Uh, whether we try to or not, there's water there. Um, whether we step in out of the shower or whether we're washing our faces, water will spill on the floor. Um, bathrooms are smaller, like we talked about. Uh, it's a small area and it's difficult sometimes to navigate. One of the things we do a lot is when we go in a home is we try to determine um, whether the wide, the door needs to be widened, uh, whether we need to do a pedestal stink. So there's there's things that we can, we'll, we'll talk about. Uh, and if any of you guys are my age or older, then you know that character right there in the middle my favorite. Uh, accessibility, believe it or not, this is a real picture uh, of, of a ramp in someone's house in Chicago. You can pretty much see just by looking at that, that that is gonna be a monumental task to get somebody up the stairs. So in the front of your house, are there stairs? We look for things like that. Um, concrete, uh, sidewalks are intact. Um, not always, especially depending on what kind of town you live in. Ways that we can deal with that is calling our local township, having somebody come out, take a look at the uh, concrete and ask for repairs, especially if it's on the public walkway. If it's on the private walkway, then that needs to be addressed um, on your own. Uh, hallways in your house, gotta be clear, uh, especially as we tend to get older um, and whether we're uh, faced with some type of surgery where now we're returning home and we're in either in a wheelchair for temporary reasons or for a, in a walk or a rollator, um, these type of hallways, as you see right here, although they are a little exaggerated, <laughs> um, this is something you gotta be careful of. Stairs, are there hand railings up? Are they sturdy? Do they go into a stud? Uh, so that you can have, uh, you know, you can have, you can rely on them. Um, put handrails on both sides. Uh, you know, a lot of times we run across people who go up one step at a time sideways and they're holding on to that one railing. Um, if there's an opportunity, try to get us a, a railing on the other side as well. I know sometimes the architecture doesn't allow that, but that's one of the things that we um, look at. Runners on the stairs, make sure they're tacked down, they're not loose. Even carpets on the on your dining room or living room floors. Um, make sure that you don't have what's called these puckers. Um, there is tape, double-sided tape that we can put on the bottom of these, or you just get those heavy carpets that have some sort of rubber background. Lighting always important, especially as we age. Um, our our vision uh, is usually one of the first senses that. Uh, is affected. Um, and so make sure there's lighting. Don't rely on the same lighting that you've had in your house over the last 20 years. Uh, night lights, um, brighter lights, these LED lights are, are, are very cost effective and they're very bright. They have daylight lights um, as well as uh, the, your white light. It's furniture. If you find yourself doing one of these things where you're walking down the hall and you're putting your hands on furniture to help you walk or get to the next place, um, probably not a good idea to keep that furniture there. Uh, you may um, not know how far it is, uh, depending on where you're at during that day. Um, you wanna make sure you have that walker and not use furniture. Small items, we talk about ottomans, that step change. Sometimes there's level changes in a home. Um, we always, we remember Dick Van Dyke, you know, he would always step down that first step. He was young and spry. And then as soon as he hit that ottoman, you know, this is what happened. Uh, it's not unusual that most of us, you know, will do this. We're stepping backwards. We got an ottoman in the house, or there's a low chair, and we take a fall. Uh, make sure that the chairs in your home are reliable. Um, they're screwed in tightly, and they're of a good height. And sometimes you need to add things to make that uh, for, to help you. Uh, obviously, this lady, uh, it was a cute picture, but this is not a reliable seat. Um, that's actually her grandson. Um, beds, 
You want to make sure that the bed is at a at, at a good level for you. Um, you have a commode. If you're in a situation where you've just had surgery, maybe you're in rehab, getting up in the middle of the night and walking to the to the bathroom might be a challenge. Get a commode um, on the side. Uh, make sure there's a lamp close by so you can turn the light on. Whether you remember the old clappers, you can turn those on, or sometimes motion sensors are so helpful um, at night. And then the commode, we talked, I just talked about the commode. You can get these from any DME, you can get these online. Even having a urinal at the bedside um, can prevent that fall from the bed to the bathroom. And it doesn't have to be long-term, could be just temporary. Uh, you know, we all have periods in our life where we're not functioning at the level that we always function at. And so we need a little help. Make sure you have mats down outside your shower. Um, be careful on the type of mats that stick suction cup to the bottom of your bathtub or your shower. They tend to uh, have, um, they, they grow like algae sometimes underneath, you know, that film that makes it slippery and sometimes you cannot rely on it. And then of course, CO detectors, um, pets. If any of you have pets, I'm not sure if you have these many pets, obviously an exaggeration. <laughs> Footwear. Make sure you guys are wearing slippers in the, in the house that have some type of rubber bottom and a back to it. Um, make sure you're not wearing shoes that came from somebody else and they're too big. Uh, that's a fall hazard. And then these emergency re response, medic, medic alert buttons are so important. They have them now that you can put them on a watch, you can put it uh, around your, your neck um, and they can tell even when you've fallen, they can call one of your close uh, family members or friends uh, before they um, initiate uh, EMS to come to the home. So the things that we focus on, that's the stuff that, that, we, that I went through the slides. These are the things we look at when we're going inside the house. Certainly people will call us and say, I, I can't get up the stairs. And so we're going in with the thought process of, well, do we put a stair lift in? Can we put a stair lift in? But there's a lot of other things that we need to look at. Um, and it's very easy to do. You know, you can have friends come over, family come over, and just have them take a look at how you get through your house, how you get up the stairs. Are you what we call butt bumping down the stairs and just trying to make it? Are you sidestepping like a sidewinder holding on to get up the stairs? Um, chances are we need to look at those stairs. Uh, outside the house, if you have more than a couple steps, Sometimes that can be a challenge. So we'll talk about some solutions for that. Uh, and then bathroom, things that we can do in our bathroom, whether it comes from a company like us uh, or things that you can get through from um, online like Amazon. So getting in and out of the house, um, these are just some projects that we've done in the past. Um, but these are examples of what you see on the left, a stair lift. Uh, in this case, this family needed to get grandpa down to the uh, boathouse, if you will. Uh, and so they put a stair lift in an outdoor stair lift. There are stair lifts that, we, that can be installed outside. Um, in the middle on the top, that's an example of a vertical platform lift or a wheelchair lift uh, that you'll see at the front of someone's home or in the back. And these are for situations when somebody has more than four or five steps and getting into the home is, it can be a challenge and there's not enough room for a ramp like you see in the bottom picture there. Um, ramps are great solutions for getting in and out of a home, providing that there is enough room uh, at, at, on, the, on the land around the stairs. And also um, if it's less than two or three steps, they can be very, they're, they're affordable, they're cost effective. Uh, and then what you see on the right is uh, a platform lift that sometimes we'll put in uh, mostly commercial buildings. So the things we think about when we go into a person's home, are the doorways, are you, can you open the doorway by yourself? If not, then you need to think possibly about an automatic door opener. They do have them for residential places. They tend to be about $2,000 to $2,500 to install one of these things. They can be remote accessed, meaning you hit a, a plate on the outside of your house and the door will open. Um, they can also be voice activated. Um, like Alexis or um, Alexia and uh, or Siri, where they can, you can just speak into your phone or something and say, open the door. And that's how you get into your house. Um, quick question, quick go. question from someone that's just asking real quick, how do these devices work for the winter and the ice and the snow? So that's a great question. Um, the things that are mechanical, like a stair lift, like a vertical platform lift, 
those are items that are all outdoor wear tested. They'll either they have battery backups. They can come with battery backups. Uh, most of these things run by battery. Uh, and there's also, they have marine grade wiring inside of these things. Um, the door openers, uh, they do not, but everything is encased. And usually we're putting these door openers on the inside of the house. But that's a great question. All of these things that go on outside people's homes are tested for, I believe, zero to 10 degrees. Now, once we get into those days when it's 20 below, these things go slow. Um, and they're very difficult. <laughs> we get a lot of calls when it's those real chilling days. Um, so great question. Uh, and then railings, as you see on the right side, these are simple. This is a more elaborate type of railing that you see here. But the point is, if you have one or two steps outside your house, and these are a challenge, um, it may not be necessary to put a ramp on, but maybe put a grab bar. Grab bars are about $30, $40 at a Home Depot or a Menards or some type of um, box store like that. And you just have to have somebody that's experienced, call your local township, see if they have a volunteer program. There are people can come out and install these for you. I know that in some townships that is available. You just got to make that phone call to the Department of Seniors or Aging uh, and see if you can get that help. Um, but a railing like this can save a hip, can save a back. Uh, just to help you get in. It's amazing how many homes that we walk up to and it's just two, three, four steps and there's no railings and, and there's a support for the roof, but that's it. So we mentioned the vertical platform lift. This is kind of a common example of these things where the person can't get to their, uh, their door. It's just too challenging. So one of the things that they're gonna do is they're gonna look for uh, this type of solution. This is about a $12,000 project, um, depending on the site prep. So the lift itself that you see there is all in one piece. You got the ramp, I mean the platform, the ramp that's attached to that platform. Typically they're 36 inches by 54 inches, but we can get them bigger or smaller. And then that tower holds all the working pieces that make that ramp go up and down, that platform go up and down. Uh, it's basically like a platform on a forklift. You push a button, you hold it, and it takes you to the next level. There's a gate at the top that stays locked until the platform gets up to that level, and then you can open it. And then we build a deck that will be a flush to the door. Um, so like I said, depending on site prep, concrete has to be poured. There is a permit that's needed for these things. Um, and then we build the deck if need be, uh, and this will get a person into their house. You can see the specs here, 750, milligram, uh, 750 pound weight capacity. Um, they go up to 14 feet. Ramps is a very popular um, accessible, accessibility device. Um, aluminum ramps, are ADA compliant, meaning that they have graspable hand railings. They're smooth. Um, the width of these ramps are 36 inches by um, ADA code and um, the slope. So if you're looking at the front of your house and you see two steps to get into your door, the ADA code is for every inch of rise from the ground to the front door, the back door, you need 12 inches of run. So if you have two steps, the code for stairway risers are about seven to seven and a half inches. You know you have about a 15 inch height from ground to door. You're gonna need a 15 foot ramp. At least that's the code that we try to go by. If it's a person in a power chair where they can just push that button and take them in, then we can cheat on that code. We can make it a little less. It'll be more of a slope, but you can get up with a power chair. If somebody's being pushed and they're relatively light, then we can cheat on that code also. So anything from two steps, three steps, uh, a ramp is a, is a good solution. You don't need a permit for an aluminum ramp. There's no um, uh, re restructured groundwork or reconstructed groundwork. We're not pouring concrete. These things can sit on grass, they can sit on gravel, um, paver blocks, but at the bottom of the ramp, we do need a nice um, safe landing platform where it's concrete, or we, because some companies have uh, landing pads, they're called landing pads and they're aluminum. A two-step ramp, um, like you see right here with a, a platform outside the door and maybe a 20-foot ramp 
is about three to four thousand um, dollars. If you're in rehab and you're coming home, um, look for companies that can rent these ramps or sell used, because um, sometimes you might only need it for a month or two, um, and you don't need to put it in there permanently. So look for something like that. Uh, the wooden ramps um, are not so popular. You need a permit for a wood ramp. Um, aesthetically, they're probably better looking than a, an aluminum ramp. So sometimes people will build a wood ramp, um, but it's, it's difficult to keep up the maintenance on those. Um, they tend to sometimes splinter on the hand railings, which can be a, an issue as you're going down the ramp. Um, Jim, uh, Jim yes, just a quick question as we're looking at these ramps, because someone asked, uh, can a person in a wheelchair get into the outdoor devices by themselves? So I think some of that too is whether or not a person can transfer on their own. That would be the first you know, answer to yes. that. But, but uh, can a person in a wheelchair get into the outdoor devices by themselves? That's yes. So great question for things that are accessible, like we talked about the wheelchair lift. That is something that a person can get in on their own. Um, there's a paddle in there that we can that you can make a paddle or a rocker switch. And depending on what you use, your elbow, your hand, your, uh, your wrist, you hold that button and it takes you up. You can just push the door with your wheelchair and that takes you to the level of the upper level, the platform. Um, a stair lift, an outdoor stair lift can be a little bit more difficult, especially if you are in a wheelchair most of the time. That transfer from the wheelchair to the chair lift um, it can be troublesome. You know, we, a, a stair lift is not a form of accessibility, and our government doesn't look at it as a form of accessibility. It's a form of accommodation. Um, one of the reasons why most insurances don't tend to cover them um, is because it is a difficult thing if you are in a, in a, in a wheelchair. Uh, ramps, certainly, you know, it's pretty basic. You, you, if you're in a wheelchair, you kind of go up to that. Uh, if you can't self-propel yourself, a lot of people will use the hand railing to pull themselves up. Uh, but once again, we're consulting people that if they have three or less steps than a ramp, you know, you can do that. If you're by yourself and you've got five or six steps, there's a good chance that you're going to be doing one of those ramps that goes back and forth and back and forth, which could make getting into the house a little challenging. That's our ramp that we're talking about that is just way too high. Um, you can imagine trying to get up that by yourself. Uh, we kind of covered this already. When we're looking at a home that has more than three steps, we're having a conversation with the client. Maybe we think about a wheelchair lift as opposed to a ramp. Because if you've got, let's just say, five or six steps going into your home, that's about 40 to 50 inches of height, uh, which means you need 40 to 50 feet of ramp, which can be a, take up a lot of space and a lot of turns. Um, so we're talking about the wheelchair lift at that point. Um, the thing with a, a ramp as well is they tend to get pricing, especially because of the cost of aluminum. Once you get over those 20, 30, 40 foot lengths, they can be somewhere close to eight, nine thousand dollars. So that's when we have the discussion about a wheelchair lift like you see at the top versus a ramp. Um, this is one of those circumstances, although very exaggerated. This was in England where the government actually pays because it's socialized medicine. They pay for these type of things. But this was probably not the best solution for this person. Um, it's a lot of turns. <laughs> So we I just talked about stair lifts being not an accessible device, but it's a very popular device just because it's cost effective. It's easy to install. Um, it is a one person user, however, and so you have to be able to stand up and transfer from a wheelchair to this chair. So the pictures that you see on the left are an example of a straight stair lift and a curved stair lift. They come in two, two kinds. Um, the lady on the left, she's swiveling away from the stairs. These are battery operated. They are attached to the stairway, to the treads. They're not attached to the wall. You push a button and you go up to the top of the stairs. You lift a little paddle like you see that lady lifting right there on the, on her, with her left hand. And that you, you swivel the chair away from the stairs and then you stand up. A typical stair lift going 14 steps 
new is going to be about $3,500 to $4,800, depending on your weight. Um, you can do used sometimes. There are companies that will offer used stair lifts. Uh, just make sure they come with some type of warranty, either labor or parts. Um, and if you are in a situation where you're uh, rehabbing, you just came home from the hospital, find a company that can rent these. Uh, I know we rent them for um, like 125 bucks a month, and that's outside the installation and the removal part of that package. Um, a rental on these are anywhere from $2,000 to $2,800. So if that works for your budget um, and you're okay with a rental, um, I I'm sorry, then a used, it works fine. Curves, if you have a stairs to a platform and then more stairs, or if you have stairs to a tri-level or a split level home, and then you do a quick 180 up to another set of stairs, those can be pricey. Um, but depending on your condition and your age, sometimes a curve is the only solution or it's the best solution. Um, but a curve, a 90 degree curve can start at 12,000 or $13,000. Um, Jim, somebody's so, asking yeah. about these, uh, that they look so handicapped. Are there any designer, quote unquote, designer versions? I mean, you know. Uh, of a stair lift? Yeah. Um, so if I understood the word designer, I would probably think that it's a, some type of custom seat or custom situation. Yeah. Um, the only things that are, the four companies that we use, the manufacturers that we use for our stair lifts, the only thing that are really custom on these things are the fabric. You can get vinyl sometimes, you can get leather, you can get different colors, um, you can get different widths on some of the stair lifts. You can get like a 17 inch width on a seat or a 23 inch width on the street, but they aren't designer. Uh, yeah, I think I, it's, I think it's perception. I think, you know, yeah. if you look at the slide on the left and you see somebody's got a gorgeous renovated home with beautiful wood floors and so forth and so on. It's just a way to get somebody safely up and down the stairs. You know? Right. Pretty straightforward. Um, we, we try not to, as our company, we yeah. try not to screw things and bolts into the, into the floors. Um, but like I said, we are these, um, stanchions or brackets. Like you see this young lady on the curve, you see those little brackets underneath that rail, those go right onto the stairway. And so they do drill in bolts into those stairs. So when we remove those stairs, a stair lift, um, there are holes remaining. So if it's a wood surface, you need to use a wood putty and you know maybe get some help they have a stain if it's carpet sometimes you could do a little brush and the hole will go away but it really is just a means to it as to get up the stairs if you've ever fallen down the stairs the you know how dangerous it is and how it can be very scary so these little stair lifts sometimes are cost effective enough to put one in and save yourself that fall uh, on the right these are just some things that we offer inside the home um, that vertical platform lift that you saw in the beginning, the wheelchair lift on the outside at the front porch, we can also put them inside a garage. Um, so you can get from one level to the next. Uh, and then what you see there on the left is a butler. It's a very expensive product. It's about $20,000, but it's a platform. You push a button and it takes this person up and down the stairs and still keeps the integrity of that stairway uh, intact. Um, but it's a, it's a pricey product. It's a pricey solution. Bathroom independence. These are things you'll see a lot more these days in Lowe's, Menards, Home Depot. There's a big push for our, for our country right now um, because more and more people are getting older to have a, a part of the Lowe's or if you will, or Home Depot, where there's a section for aging in place. And they'll sell things like this, like a, a pedestal sink. Um, it's attractive. These are about a seven hundred to a thousand dollars. What's nice about these is if you are in a wheelchair, you can access this sink from different levels, as opposed to say having a sink with a vanity underneath it or you know the, some drawers. Um, in the middle there, that's more of a kind of looks like a rehab, doesn't it? It's a cantilevered sink with cushion piping underneath. Um, this is a really good solution for folks that are in a wheelchair. You see the toilet right next to that sink that has what's called a linado bar. There are other solutions like that linado bar that bolt to the floor or they can bolt to the floor, I mean, to the wall. And so what this does is in those spaces where you don't have a wall, you can put one of these things in there and use that to get up and off the stairway, uh, off the toilet. Um, and then what you see on the right is uh, a roll under sink for somebody who wants that in the, to keep that aesthetic look in their home uh in their bathroom they want that nice big counter space so they we do one of these things where it's a roll under with the wheelchair 
these are just forms of support um, that we will kind of give people as a resource. Um, the very popular one that you'll probably see at the bottom left is that walk-in tub. I will apologize that this picture is probably 10 years outdated. They have tubs now that have a much wider entry to get into the tub. Um, there's also wheelchair accessible tubs that where the whole door comes up kind of like a, some of these Teslas or these cars, you know, um, the, if you remember, um, they will allow a person to be able to seat transfer inside. The challenge with these walk-in tubs is they take a lot of water. They usually take anywhere from 60 to 80 gallons of water. So it takes a long time to fill up. Um, you're sitting there obviously with no clothes on and it, it, you can get cold. It's even worse if you're sitting there after and you're waiting for the water to drain out. Um, it takes about two minutes for this water to drain and you're just sitting there in the cold. The other thing with these walk-in tubs is that um, they can be expensive. Uh, a tub by itself is about $8,000, $9,000. And then there might be site prep, um, removing the old tub. Uh, if it's on a second floor, we have to make sure that the supports uh, in the basement or on the first floor are gonna hold this tub with its 80 gallons of water. Um, but they're therapeutic, there's jets, they come with heated seats now. And uh, so, you know, it, we don't sell a lot of them. It's just not conducive to our population of people with disabilities. Um, or the, even our aging population, uh, which is probably why this guy looks really good looking and he's probably you know, somewhere in his 50s. Uh, those two chairs that you see at the top, one is more um, uh, commercial, uh, but we do use it for a lot of our clients that um, have issues with mobility uh, from the point where they just can't use their lower extremities. Um, this is a chair that you can roll around the house and then when you're ready to go take a bath, this will connect to the piece that's inside the tub and slides over. Um, something a little bit more cost effective is what you see there on the right corner, right top corner. That's called a bath seat or a bath assist. Um, you can get these online. Uh, they're typically about three or $400. It's a plastic seat that has that plastic back that you see and they can, you, they can recline. Some of them have a, a reclining uh, adapter to it, but there's four suction uh, feet at the bottom that stick to the bottom of your tub. It's, um, you have a little remote. You, you, what you do is you see these two wings that flap down on the tub. You can slide transfer if you're in a wheelchair or you could be in a rollator and step, sit on this and then swing your legs in. You push a button and it takes you down to the bottom of the tub. So you can still have that bath feel. It doesn't take you all the way down. There's about a two inch height there, but it gets you down in there without having to worry about getting back up out of the tub. Um, I think these are made by Drive Medical. They're called Bella Vita or Bella Aqua. There's different kinds, but these are a nice solution. Um, bottom right, this is, I'm just showing this on our presentation just because these have become a popular item. They also come with doors. Uh, these like little swing gates, uh, if you will, and you want these to be able to swing in. Um, but that tub cutout, which is very popular in the East Coast, because I, our company uh, on the East Coast installed these. The problem with our area in the Midwest is you got a lot of these homes that have tubs that are um, cast iron or steel or porcelain. It's really difficult to make that cut perfect. And then this kit, if you will, slides over the tub and you have to silicone it and caulk it and make sure it's um, sealed tightly. The problem we were having over the years is that the shifting uh, of the home or somebody hitting it and kicking it over the months causes a leak, which can be a really big problem. But a cost for this is about $2,000 installed. So it's very cost effective compared to putting a whole new shower in, which can cost, well, we'll, we'll cover that. Uh, bath modifications, we talked about that linado bar uh, on the bottom left. That's another example of the linado bar. I'll, I'll show another example moving forward here. We talked about the three-in-one commode. These can be next to the bed. Uh, and it's for people who've never used them. You can put these things next to the bed. You can put them over your existing toilet and raise it up. So now you have a nice platform to be able to not squat down so far and still have something to push off of when you're getting up and down off the toilet. Um, and then another bath modification that we um, do quite a bit is the bidet. Um, although in the United States, it's called a washlet for whatever reason. Um, but these are really nice for folks who maybe they, had, they were in rehab rotator cuff surgery, people who might be morbidly obese, um, people who may have a progressive illness such as MS or maybe even ALS,
who find that they no longer have the uh, ability to use their upper extremities, these bidets are very good, very good solution. Um, you have that little wand that you see in the middle there kind of shooting down into the toilet hole. Um, it sprays warm water on your backside. Um, and some of them have heated seats. Some have um, blow dryers uh, on, their, on the back of these chairs so that you obviously can dry your backside. You could get these now at Costco. I saw one in Costco a couple of days ago. They have them in Lowe's and Home Depot. Their standard one is about three, four hundred dollars. You don't need a plumber to put these in. I mean, if you're fairly handy or you have someone in the home that's that, that that or family that's handy, you remove the old toilet seat, you put this on top, uh, you put this on top of the commode and just bolt it in. The water is just a water outlet that goes to your existing water line, and then you just plug it in to a GFI circuit in the bathroom. If you want it to be more aesthetically appealing, have somebody, a company like ours, we can put them in. Um, they can be hardwired into your home for electric, uh, and um, it's, it'll be a lot easier. But you can do this on your own. Toilet seat risers, I have a little cross at the top through there. Um, you can get a lot of those toilet seat risers that you see at the top uh, in your local medical supply stores. I don't like these. They have a tendency to slip over time and they can fall from one side to another. Um, what we prefer is that elevated toilet seat riser you see on the bottom left. This is just one example, they have others, but the point is you want something where you remove the toilet seat, the existing toilet seat and put this in its place and bolt it down and you can add risers to them as well. Um, the one that you see on the right is called a Toilevator. It's a ridiculous name, um, but in effect, what it is is just a piece of plastic with a hole, and there's um, the, it comes with a kit that has a wax ring in there, so you can just put your toilet back on top of this and get four inches of height um, with one of these things. The challenge is you should make sure you have a plumber do this because they could leak, um, but a price tag on this is about hundred dollars just for the kit alone that's called the Toilevator. And these are very popular grab bars. These are a little bit more designer to use the word we used before. Um, I really like that picture on the bottom left. It's called a super pole or a tension pole. And this is a product that uh, there's a plate at the top and then there's a plate at the bottom and it pushes up against the ceiling and against the floor. And there's a tool that does that for you. Um, you have to just kind of do a little cranking thing and it spreads these two poles apart and there's a steel rod in the middle. Now you're able to put this pole anywhere in the house that you have a flat ceiling um, and a, obviously a sturdy floor. You can, in this picture, they show this gentleman pulling himself off the toilet that bar that he's holding on to, that horizontal bar is actually movable. It pops, you can lift it up, turn it and drop it into a lock position. And you can actually walk from that toilet all the way into the tub. You can use this next to your bed. You can use this next to a recliner. Um, what's nice about these things, you can get these online. You go to Amazon or on, anywhere online and just put in super pole or tension pole. Um, I believe they're around three to $400. Um, companies that supply these like ours uh, will tend to screw them into the ceiling just because we want that to stay there. Um, we typically will charge somewhere around $700 to install one of these things, but they're really a great solution uh, that anybody can put in on their own. For the, for the grab bars, um, interesting, you know, when you've got all these um, uh, houses maybe that are complete where you don't know where the studs are, do you need the studs for grab bars? You do. You need the studs for grab bar, especially if it's a person who's doing it on their own. Mm -hmm. um, if there are no studs, certainly there are, there are homes that they're not 16 inches, you know, on center apart, or there's, it's hard to find those studs. Mm -hmm. There are products that we use called wingets, W-I-N-G-I-T-Z. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it's like an anchor that pushes through the hole and, but different than other types of anchors, these things hold up to 500 pounds, at least they're rated for that. So if we can't find a stud, we'll do that. Um, if you're in a situation where you're outside of the bath area and you just need something to help you get up um, out of your car or maybe next to your room, those suction grab bars can be acceptable, uh, appropriate. I don't like using those in the bathroom only because over time, the humidity, um, if you, especially if you put them on a tile, you don't put it on correctly, the time you really need it can come off. 
So I'm not a big advocate for suction grab bars um, in, within the, the, the confines of the bath and shower area. Um, but yeah, good question. These should definitely, or they have to go into a stud. Um, and there's different types. There's all kinds, like you see on the left, it's called the Dependa Bar. There's different names for these things. You can get these grab bars at your local hardware stores. They're going to be anywhere from 30 to 50 bucks, uh, depending on what you're looking for. If you're inside the shower, you want to get them with gnarled, a gnarled surface, it kind of like a diamond cut, where if your hands have soap on them and they're wet, it, it offers friction uh, when you're on it. Uh, if you're inside the tub, you want to probably get a long grab bar, maybe going 48 inches across so you could grab it anywhere, or you can put it on an angle if you're going from a seated position, like on a shower chair, and you're going to stand up, you can get that grab bar and put it on an angle. Also get them on your, like this lady is in the middle, as she's stepping out, and then maybe on the other side as you're stepping in, um, and cost effective. You know, you, you can put four or five of these all over the house. In fact, that's the first thing I do is tell people, walk around the house and everywhere you're grabbing on walls, Try to put a grab bar. And then these are your extreme when you're in a situation where you have to get into the shower uh, in a wheelchair. Uh, the one on the left is an example of what's called a kit. It's a kit, a best bath kit. Um, prices for some of these showers, as you can imagine, could get rather expensive. Um, so we have a kit that's actually accessible. Uh, it's ADA compliant because it has a plywood backing. You want to have something that you can drill that grab bar into. Um, you'll find that there's a lot of companies that have been popping up like um, uh, Bath Fitter or Rebath, and they have these really nice looking um, uh, overlays, if you will. But the walls are fiberglass. And what happens is when you put that grab bar in and it hits the stud, it pulls the wall, that fiberglass wall, away from the drywall, which then can lead to leaks at the top. So be careful um, you know, when you're thinking about or considering pulling that tub out and putting in a walk-in a walk or a barrier-free um, that if you are uh, in a situation where you have a disability, um, you wanna make sure you get a shower that is gonna be ADA compliant. Uh, and then in the middle there you see, and on the right, those are more of your upscale kind of custom bathrooms. Um, I'm sorry, let's go back to that kit. That kit's about, depending on what you're putting in there, eight to $10,000 job. The ones that you see there in the middle and on the far right go from a relatively $12,000 to $20,000 bathroom job. Um, it just depends on what people want, what kind of tiles they want. Um, you know, certainly even if you have a disability, you want your showers to at least look good um, if you can and if you have the resources. Um, I'm not going to go through every one of these. I'll certainly, uh, you know, other works, you have this, um, I'll, you know, you can keep this, but there are a lot of organizations that will help with resources. Um, uh, there's agencies out there, like you see here, Clearbrook uh, is, a, is an agency. There are a lot of what's called home base agencies. Um, if you live in the city of Chicago, I don't know how many people are on here on this uh, Zoom, but if you know people, there's a program that the, the city of Chicago has. It's called the Mayor's Office for Persons with Disabilities. You have to own your own house. You have to be under the age of 59, um, but they will pay for a shower. They'll pay for a wheelchair lift, you know, to get in and out of your house. Um, children, there's programs for um, children uh, that and it's not related to income, it's related to the type of disability that person has. There is reverse mortgages, there's FHA loans. Um, if you're a veteran, um, there are different waivers at the VA uh, covering many different circumstances in a, in a, in a veteran, uh, in, in the veteran's challenges. So it doesn't always have to be combat connected. It can be just a veteran who served, honorably discharged, and has asthma, and they can't get up and down the stairs. You go to the doctor at the VA, um, even if you've never been there, you ask the doctor, hey, I need help getting up and down my stairs, and it starts the process. But they, the VA pays for all of these things that you've seen here today. Um, as far as, as well as grab bars, they give you grab bars, wheelchairs. So that's, the, the VA is a great resource. Um, uh, rebuilding together, sometimes the, you know, GoFundMe accounts can help pay for these things. I always tell folks, um, depending on what village you live in, if you're just thinking about putting a stairlift in, call your local village and um, ask them. 
uh, I, you know, or let them know your story. And it's usually you're calling the Department of Aging, uh, the Department of Senior Services, and you're saying, I am a person who is disabled. I'm trying to get up and down my stairs. Do you folks offer a waiver or a grant to help keep me in my house safely? Um, I will tell you, Carpentersville, last time I saw this about a year ago, they gave somebody $1,000. Doesn't cover the whole cost, but it's something. Um, Mount Prospect, they were at $1,500. I don't know where they're at right now. Of course, you know, as we go through our government, we have different issues with our, our funds uh, and federal grants, but it's always worth a phone call to call your local township and just ask. Uh, trust funds, banks offer trust funds. Um, that's a little involved. Um, and that's kind of it. For our company, we do come out and do evaluations. I know the COVID has really uh, left an impression on all of our uh, presentations. So there was a time when we were, you know, doing these, our evaluations and our installations, uh, very COVID friendly, where our guys would wear booties and hats and black masks. We will still do that uh, upon request. Um, we certainly have, we have a lot of clients that have ALS, certain stages of cancer, where we still want to protect them. Um, we have a showroom. Uh, if you're in a situation or even if you live out of state or have somebody that lives out of state uh, and you could find a company like this, see if they have a showroom so you can go in and test all these things and see if it even works for you. And that's it. Wonderful. Jim, amazing. Amazing amount of information. Just fabulous. There's um, a lot out there. There's a lot out there. And um uh, you know, we've had some questions during the chat. Curious to know if anyone wants to uh, unmute themselves and ask a question or put it in the chat. I'm happy to help with that. Um, uh, you know, I don't know. A lot of this stuff, like, what is the lead time? You know, what's the lead time for someone to be able to get services uh, from Lifeway Mobility into their home? God, Barbara, that's a great question. Um, and you know, things have changed drastically in the last year with supply right. issues. Um, a stair lift, a curved stair lift is about four to five weeks. Okay. Another challenge, not to mention the money. You know, of course, there's a, there's a cost challenge with those, but they're custom made. So there's about a four to five week wait on those just to build it. A straight stair lift, maybe about a week, depending okay. if the company has them in stock. Mm -hmm. um, vertical platform lifts about two or three weeks. Uh, grab bars, you know, typically if we're uh, coming into a home, um, our, those, our, our construction projects are about two weeks out. Uh, I think it's kind of the status quo right now just because there is such a demand and there are so many supply chain issues. Um, I, wanted to, um, I wanted to cover insurance. One of the top questions for a lot of folks um, is Medicare cover this type, uh, cover these uh, pieces of equipment or does Medicaid? And 99% of the time, they do not. There are long-term insurance uh, companies out there that will cover these things. You just have to pick up that phone and say, I'm thinking of doing this. Do you guys cover it? Um, some type of uh, public waivers, like your Department of Rehabilitative Services, um, once you apply and become eligible, will cover these types of products. There are some insurances. You just got to make that phone call. United Healthcare, Aetna uh, used to be a provider to offer some type of waiver. Um, so ask your insurance company. Okay. I'm um, curious to know if your slides uh, are, are available. Could we, if you emailed us the presentation and anybody wanted to copy those slides, uh, are you distributing this or do you, yes. do you prefer not to? Okay. Yes. Um, I, and, and actually, I'll, I, Emily may have it. I don't know, but I'll send it to Emily right after I'm finished with this. That's great. Yeah. Well, I don't think we have it. So this is just absolutely a marvelous presentation and you your company, uh, how, all, how, how long has Lifeway Mobility been in business? Well, Lifeway Mobility has been in business 10 years out of the East Coast. We right. became Lifeway Mobility about two years ago, but all of the people we have here uh, and the, the company itself, which used to be Extended Home Living Services, we've been in business since 1990. Yeah, A lot of experience um, in helping folks age in place. Amazing. Well, we thank you every for your time, everybody. We really appreciate everything, Jim. Thank you so much for taking all this time. And what a what a magnificent presentation. And uh, your images were wonderful. Your information was wonderful. And we thank everybody for coming. 
So thank we'll, you guys we'll look for that and get it distributed. Thank you. Sounds good. Have a nice day. Have a wonderful day.